So uh, who am I? Why should you listen to me? I'm a security engineer at a healthcare company here in the Valley. Um, I've worked in a bunch of places. I have a very network-centric approach. Uh, my first thing that I do whenever I have a problem with a website is fire up TCP dump and see what's actually going on on the wire. Uh, I've sort of become obsessed with this idea of removing layers of abstraction from like the truth of what's happening on our computers because we're getting further and further away from the hardware, and that's kind of dangerous in my opinion, uh, especially when you're a security practitioner. You know, you don't want to just rely on Wireshark. You really want to know what you're doing when you're looking at packets. Uh, like most security people, I'm a Python enthousi enthusiast, so you can think of me what you will. Uh, you might have seen me at CactusCon, uh, Skeptic Camp, Nerd Night, and I think there's some other ones I've spoken at. And now Plug, so thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm not going to say anything controversial, but just in case, uh, that's just me, no one else. So who are you? Hopefully you know just a little bit about the Linux command line, which is something I couldn't take for granted the first time I gave this, so that's cool. Um, if you have some networking basics, this is going to be much better, because um, I'm not going to have a ton of time to really break down how stuff like TCP works. But I'm still going to try to make it interesting. So um, we're not going to be able to do interactive stuff tonight just because of the time constraints, but uh, secudio.com is my website. If you go to secudio.com uh, slash plug.html, which does use JavaScript. I'm sorry, I'm lazy and I just use Bootstrap. Um, you can get on there. I have some exercises that I had to cut out from this version and PCAPs that you can run those exercises on. That page also has solutions and um, uh, answers on it, so you can check your work. And if you have questions, uh, I will have my email up at some point. It's ktires at gmail. Feel free to reach out to me. So this is a quote that resonates with me. If you know the why, you can live anyhow. It's, again, with those layers of abstraction. If you know what's going on at the wire level, or as close as you can get, you'll be able to use your tools more efficiently. Think of creative ways to use them. So some of the things that are important to keep in mind is that communication is deterministic. It doesn't just happen however the computer feels like it at that time. There's protocols and RFCs and standards that are written that we can count on generally existing unless you have a lot of errors introduced into your network. Uh, you can look at traffic at different layers of abstraction, You know whether you're doing a developer console in Chrome or using Wireshark or a wireless sniffer. I mean, there's different levels of the OSI model, which is the model that I use uh, that you can look at. Any traffic you're interested in knowing if it's correct, you need to understand what that looks like, which is a uh, know your protocols kind of thing. Read the RFCs, Google, read Wikipedia. Wikipedia is surprisingly good about um, providing basic context for the protocols that we use every day. Um, I'm a big believer in this. Your brain's not super reliable. Even if you're right nine out of 10 times, it's still a 10% failure rate. And if your car failed 10% of the time, you'd get a new one. So. I love writing down my powers of two chart, my hex chart, and all that stuff just to make sure that it uh, is available. I don't have to trust this meatware. And we all know this. You're not the first person with a, your question, probably. So Google uh, voraciously and Stack Overflow, Quora, mailing list, all that stuff should hopefully answer the questions you might have. So let's say I want to go to Bing. Just kidding. I want to go to Google. Um, so from an application view, you put Google into web browser, then Google comes up. From a protocol view, in this case, uh, TCP, and, or uh, yeah, I guess it's TCP and UDP, HTTP, and DNS, it sends a DNS request, it gets it, and then opens up a uh, session over port 80 or 443 to the web browser, and you get your page. From a network view, it gets even more messy. It sends a packet, does a bunch of routing, decrements TTL, recalculates the checksum, puts the IP header back together. Does that a whole bunch of times until it comes back to you. And you can see we've gone from two steps to eight steps very quickly. So that's really what I'm talking about when I say that there's different levels of abstraction that you can look at uh, this on. In this case, layer seven, layer four, and layer three. So what are these layers I'm talking about? It's the OSI model. Is everyone familiar with that? A little bit? All right. So I remember it as a person selling tea never dies painfully. Um, all people seem to need data processing is another popular one. Where I'm really interested is layer 4, 3, and 2, which is your transport network and data link. Um, because everything gets encapsulated like this. So you have your application data, which is going to be like your HTTP, and then they stick a TCP header on there, 
And that's your segment, is what we would formally call that. So it's the layer 4 header in your data. Then we throw an IP header, and it becomes a packet. A layer 2 header, it becomes a frame. And then you throw a preamble, and you throw it on the wire, and those are just bits. And to see that uh, concretely, that's our layer 2 header that I have highlighted right there. So you can see the MAC next protocol. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but the next one's the IP header. So we can look at that. Uh, for instance, looking at this, I can tell you it's an ICMP packet, and uh, it's going to 192 addresses. Um, the next one is our protocol header. In this case, uh, it's ICMP. We can see that it's a uh, type 8 code 0, which is a request, I believe, or a reply. I don't have that memorized. Again, the meat wire is not really reliable. And then your actual data, which is the bulk of what happens in your protocol. So one of the big things I had to remove from this was talking about setting up a capture infrastructure, which is something I actually get a lot of questions on. So if you have questions on how to set up packet, packet acquisition on your network, please email me. I'm more than happy to help with that, um, whether it's just questions or even doing hands-on work. Uh, for the love of the game, I love doing packet stuff. So. Uh, this on Secudio.com on the front page is my original CactusCon talk in a PDF form where all these slides are included. So feel free to review that. It's just not animated all cool. So as I mentioned before, knowing your protocols is really important. Um, protocols act in normal ways. So we can uh, study those protocols to know how they should be acting with stimulus and response. RFCs are actually not so bad to read, um, especially if you have an interest in the protocol you're reading about. Uh, you can use some layers, and this is a little more slightly higher networking uh, thought, but if you have something that's running TCP, you can actually make some assumptions about the function of the higher level protocol. Um, something that's going to be connection oriented, generally a little more reliable. If it's UDP, it might be dealing with some sort of media traffic. If it's something else, then good luck. Who knows? Uh, and then if you have some servers, just fuzz them. Like, Figure out some fuzzing program and just throw garbage at them and see what happens and see how their protocol stacks handle it. I, something I do on weekends. It's fun. And then uh, a lot of questions I get when people are setting up cap or capture infrastructures is how do I deal with encryption? Because I have all this HTTPS traffic and I don't know what crazy porn my employees are looking at. Um, unfortunately, can't break that. But also, fortunately, you can't break that. So depending on the, uh, the uh, angle you're coming at this, you can do some stuff in line, like SSL strip, to figure out what your employees are doing or your kids or whatever. But uh, that can be a little bit slow, and there's some trickery you have to do with certificates to make it transparent. Um, but you can use the metadata, just like uh, Hans mentioned. You know, source port, destination port, source address, destination address, those sorts of things don't get encrypted. Um, unless you're dealing with IPsec, but that's you know, a whole set of different problems. So you can get an idea at least, NS look up an IP and say, oh, OK, so they're going to this crazy you know, evil.uporn.com. And you're like, whoa, I don't even want to know. Um, SSH man in little is fascinating for another talk. So let's get to the tools, which is my favorite part. Um, I love this quote. Our tools shape us. Or excuse me, we shape our tools and then they shape us. Wireshark is a great example of this. I've met so many lazy analysts who are like, yeah, I'm an intrusion analyst expert. I know how to use Wireshark. I'm like, what else? Oh, just Wireshark. That's all you need. I am very skeptical of uh, GUI tools because most GUI tools, in my opinion, are places where data goes to die. If I can't easily extract data out of a tool, then I don't like to use it. So. Uh, so I like going to the command line, because standard in, standard out. It's beautiful. So there's going to be many tools for the job. Um, my solutions, even on my answer, or for the uh, questions I've posted on Secudio, are just one way to do it. I would actually encourage you to think of other ways to solve the uh, exercises that I have up there. Uh, one tiny thing is you can change the uh, privilege level that your PCAP applications run at, and that's very important to do. Because in Snort and uh, in Wireshark, there's been buffer overflow vulnerabilities where they can send you malcrafted or uh, malcrafted packets intentionally targeted to those applications. And most of the time, when you run Wireshark, it runs as root, and then they pop that, and you have root on the box. So um, there's plenty of tutorials on how to set that up on Google. I am a big believer in picking your core set of tools, and then 
learning those really well. I'm still working on refining you know, my core set of tools. But also, play with other ones. See what you like. See what you don't like. And if one doesn't exist, absolutely please build it. I uh, actually released a tool with this talk, which I was pretty proud of. And share it. Uh, I'll, I'm sorry? So I will actually show you, but it's a uh, Python wrapper for conversations in T-Shark, because the T-Shark conversation interface, in my opinion, is very hard to use, especially when you're trying to select a conversation. And we'll see that in a second. So the thing that a lot of uh, Linux and Unix command line tools is written on is libpcap, or winpcap if you're on the Windows platform. It's just a common packet collection interface. It's very cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to teach it to myself in Erlang, of all things, because I'm stupid and I, I like playing with Erlang. So there's going to be two types of capture formats that we're going to be using. Um, I'm actually doing really well on time, so I might simmer down on the tempo a little bit. Thank you for bearing with me, by the way. So PCAP, which is packet capture. Um, it's your most basic format. It's pretty lightweight. Um, I have honeypots set up all over the world that I like to capture stuff on, and this is the I use TCP dump to capture PCAPs. And then there's PCAP NG, which is what the Wireshark tool suite uses. And um, that you can have comments as more granular timestamps. Um, so hopefully we'll get past 2034 or whatever it is with our uh, PCAPs. Um, and you can, one of the big advantages is with a regular PCAP, you can only have a single interface feeding into the PCAP file. Or with PCAP NG, you can have multiple capture interfaces like via dump cap. All right, so anyone here use TCP dump? Yep, exactly. TCP dump is probably my favorite tool um, because it's so simple, but it's super powerful because of BPF filters, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, you can read traffic from the wire. You can read it from a file. So if uh, I've used this last week, a user was saying, hey, I can't get to this website. What's going on? And I fired up, uh, unfortunately, it was a Wireshark because it was a Windows box, but I saw resets coming immediately, like faster than it is reasonable. So I'm like, oh, the proxy's blocking you. That's exactly what it was. Um, I've done similar things on TCP dump. It can be a little bit arcane, but it's pretty useful. Um, that's how I capture packets if I have the option to do so. And uh, you can output, you can pipe the output to other tools depending on the type of output that you choose. And again, it requires root, so just be aware of that. Um, try to put it in its own group. So normally, I don't like just reading off flags, but there's some ones that I do want to point out. Uh, the one that you pretty much always have to run is dash n, which disables name resolution. If you leave name res resolution on, it's going to severely impact how quickly you can capture or read things off the wire. I just turn that off. Um, give it a capital D, and you can see the interfaces you can actually capture on. Um, and then you use I with the interface description to actually tell it to select an interface. W, no surprise, write, R, read. Uh, X, prints it out just in hex, which is beautiful. We actually saw an example of it earlier when I showed the little colored packet. And capital X will give you the uh, output uh, in hex as well as ASCII. And if you do dash V, it'll give you some extra IP info. And uh, I believe it does capture layer two, but that doesn't get expressed very much because most of the time we don't care about layer two information that much. So if you were following along, capture some pings uh, using sudo, tcp dump, n, i, whatever your interface is, and write it to a pcap. And then over here, at the very end of that line, is uh, icmp, which is a filter. So we can actually tell, tell uh, tcp dump what we should actually be capturing. And before I do a quick example, uh, I want to speak to BPF, which is the Berkeley packet filter. Which is super cool. Um, it can filter packets pretty much any way that you can conceive of, um, as long as you know what the fields of your protocols are. And you can actually overload these things too, which is a whole different talk. So your basic primitives that you're going to be dealing with is an ID and a qualifier. So the ID is what you're looking for, and a qualifier modifies that. So uh, in this example, um, if I'm looking for IP9 equals 1, does anyone know what that means? It's ICMP, because the ninth byte offset in an IP header is in indicating what the next protocol is. So with that filter, I'd only see ICMP traffic. Uh, there's also abbreviations, 
just like uh, I have pointed out here, where ICMP equals IP9 equals 1. So if you don't know off the top of your head what the TCP flags are, you might be able to leverage that. Um, and then here I have an example of anding. You can actually bit mask these out, which is pretty cool. So if you want to see an at or a sin, anything with a sin flag, including sin, synac, or Christmas gans or whatever, um, you would use the ampersand to bang equals zero, um, which unfortunately I don't have time to get into, but yeah. So let me see if I can do a quick example of TCP dump here, just so you can get comfortable with the output. Uh, of course. I'm a really good typer when people aren't watching me. All right, I don't actually know which one is which. That was really hard to read. All right, so let's see if it's EN4 is what I want. Yep, so that's the output. It's pretty all right. It's not too bad. You can see where it's going from, where it's going to. Let me uh, throw that capital X on there so you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, we have our, and this is oddly formatted, but uh, our IP header, and then the actual ASCII uh, output of that. So if you had something that wasn't plain text, like FTP passwords, for instance, you can see that in there. All right, so back to the presentation. And of course, it's gone. There we go. All right, so who here has used Wireshark? All right, a few more hands in TCP dump, so got to fix that delta. Um, so Wireshark on uh, Mac and Linux comes, and I actually think Windows as well, but I don't use uh, Wireshark on Windows very much, um, comes with something called the suite of the cap tools. And these are command line packet tools that come with Wireshark. Uh, I really like them. I just started using them about a year ago, and they've been super useful. Uh, we're not going to stop until we get to T-Shark, but I will go over the uh, ones that get included. So the first one is dump cap, which is essentially TCP dump. And it's actually what you're using if you use T-Shark or Wireshark. It's the underlying packet capture mechanism. Uh, you can feed it BPF filters, um, so you can you know, selectively capture things. It doesn't display the packets out to screen, but it does keep a running count, which is pretty nice. Um, and if you absolutely need your packets in ng format, this is what you want to use. Um, yes. Oh, on Ubuntu, there's a bug. That's why I paused there. There's a bug that you can't write to any directory other than temp, um, at least that I've tested. So I've tried to write it to my home directory, and it just doesn't work. Very mysterious. Uh, another one that I really like is cap infos, and this just gives you, like, quick data about the packet capture, like how long was it, when did it start, when did it end, how many packets did you, you capture, how much data did you capture. Um, I have a model that I've written for that, which you can't really see, but it's at GitHub. Um, I'm going to rewrite that because I wrote that a long time ago and it's absolutely terrible. It makes me vomit. Have you ever seen your own code that you wrote like a year ago and you just want to punch yourself in the face with a time machine? Anyway. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I've done a lot of statistical analysis. Uh, I'm actually in the process of using this library for some statistical analysis I'm doing. It's, it's not totally unuseful, so I might take a look at it if you want to get a daily average of, say, number of packets you're capturing. Another really cool one that you're going to need if you're dealing with large PCAPs is edit cap. So what this is used for is chopping uh, uh, packets from a PCAP file. So if you have duplicates, you can get those out, and you can actually set sort of the threshold for duplicate detection. Uh, if you need to change threshold, or if you need to change file formats from PCAP to PCAP NG or vice versa, you can use edit cap to do that. 
You can truncate packets, which is really nice because, you know, let's say you have a 1500 byte packet and you really only need the first 64 bytes because you're just keeping the header information. You can use edit cap to do that, and that's something I do pretty frequently. And then probably the best thing about it is you can use this to adjust timestamps. If anyone's ever done any incident response or incident intrusion analysis, and all of the different systems on a network are using a different clock source, it is a nightmare to try to figure out what happened. Um, and you really have to normalize your timestamps. And it doesn't remove your original PCAP. That was a question I got at CactusCon, and I, I answered that. So merge cap, um, you can guess what it does. It merges caps. I'm not talking about hats. Sorry, stupid joke. Um, they got to laugh. I'll take it. Uh, it essentially like stitches them together, so you can have multiple PCAPs, and you just stitch them all together, which would be nice. Like let's say you have five workstations, and you want to put them all in the same PCAP for some reason. Stitch those together, get an idea of what happened. Merge cap can do that for you. Um, or you can do dash a, and it'll just append each other, like one after another, which you may want to do for some reason. I'm not going to judge you. Now, how many people here have used T Shark? Nice. T-Shark is essentially command line Wireshark. Um, it needs a good book that I've thought about writing, but I'm not that great with T-Shark. Um, I don't want people like relying on my deficient knowledge to be a T-Shark expert. But there is one on Packed Pub, which is OK, um, if you can put up with Packed Pub's questionable editing standards. Um, you can use display filters when you're reading packets, which is huge, because as we know, it's like 500 pages of display filters in the Wireshark man page or something ridiculous. Um, you can follow conversations, which if you've used Wireshark, you know that that's really cool. It essentially reassembles TCP conversations, and you can see what happened. You, know, uh, you can get HTTP headers, web page content, FTP downloads. You can carve files out with FTP conversations, which is something I might show next year at CactusCon if they take my CFP. Um, you can do command line statistics, so like protocol hierarchy, which is really nice. You can look at the conversations and counts of bytes from and bytes to. So it's like almost a, uh, a mini flow, which is pretty cool, while still maintaining the integrity of your original PCAPs. Um, I don't cap with it. If I'm going to cap with something in the cap suite, I use dump cap, or I will use TCP dump, because I think it's better. Much more better. So useful flags. If you are capturing for some reason, dash n is huge. If you're reading, it's not that big of a deal. One of the things that I like to use dash n, which is no name resolution for T-Shark, is that it won't say port 80 is HTTP, because that's not always the case. Like when I set up malicious C2 servers, it's always port 80, because no one looks. There's like, oh, that's web traffic. I don't care. Not that I've ever done that. Um, if anyone's used decode as, it's really useful if you have in-house protocols, um, or you have 9090, let's say, running HTTP, dash D, you can tell it to decode. Port 9090 is HTTP. Uh, dash Q will quiet the output. So the annoying thing about T-Shark when you load a PCAP file in it is it prints every packet, no matter what. Um, and you generally want to quiet that. And then you can do some pretty neat little uh, custom uh, format formatting for your output using T or TEE. -E which uh, there's a little recipe in here that I'll give you all. And then dash R lets you use the Wireshark filters. And then dash Z is like my favorite thing in the world because it provides a lot of extra functionality on the command line, like statistics and conversations. But last time I checked, apt-get gets you 1.6. And if you have 1.6, you don't get to play with all the cool toys. So either build it from source yourself or find a repository that has a newer than version 1.8 uh, version of T-Shark, and you can do dash V to check that at the command line. So this is the T I was talking about. So if you do dash T fields, it says, hey, print fields from my packet. Dash E tells you what fields to print, and those are in the same like naming syntax as Wireshark, so IP.SRC would be IP source. And then dash E tells you how to print it. So if we look at our recipe right here for printing out source uh, IP import and destination IP import for TCP, you can see here I'm T-Shark, no name resolution, reading the file, using a Wireshark read filter of TCP to only read TCP. And then I'm saying print fields, IP source, source port, IP dest, dest port, a separator being a 
comma, and then a quote equals double quote, or your quote equals D is double quote. So now I have a double quoted CSV file that I can import to Excel or any cool system that I want. Um, very, very useful. Oh, that's really slow. And then dash Z, like I talked about, this one's really cool. Um, ZIO PHS is protocol hierarchy summary, so it'll tell you like, here's 100% of your traffic is Ethernet, and 80% of your traffic is TCP, and 40% of that traffic is HTTP, and 20% of your traffic is UDP, and 99% of that is UDP, or as a DNS. So it's really good. It's one of the first things I do with a reasonably sized PCAP file is to just get an idea of what happened. Because if there's a bunch of, you know, uh, what looks like voice traffic, then I treat it differently than I would something that I'm trying to figure out if there's an FTP malicious download or upload. Uh, dash Z conv is awesome. If you've never seen like TCP conversations before, it's awesome because you can see source, destination, what was transferred, uh, number of bytes, how long it lasted. And then you can use dash Z follow to actually follow those conversations and see what transpired. And then if any of you are fans of expert info, you can feed it expert, comma, whatever the protocol is, and it'll look for anomalies and how that protocol is executed in your actual PCAP file. I've had mixed results with that, but it's one of those things I think it's always worth a, uh, a run. And then here's my plug for PyConvos, so I'll show this super quick. Um, so normally, actually I don't have time to show you normally, so I'll just show you the goodness. It was all going so well, and now I've lost total control. You guys have been an excellent audience, by the way. Thank you. Much love. I feel it. All right. So Python. Python was. So you can see here, I enumerate all the conversations that have happened here. And by default, it's TCP. And you can see how many bytes were transferred and the duration. So. This is not very interesting, 443, it's encrypted, 22, not very interesting. So we'll look at this one. And the thing that PyConvos does that uh, you can't do in T-Shark natively is you can use this identifier over here and just feed it the identifier and it will actually show you what happened. So you can see here, I went to some website that is hopefully not embarrassing. Yeah, no sniff. I think that's good. Um, and X dash headers, by the way, or extension headers that are not normally a part of HTTP protocol, a lot of malware uses those to like report back to C2 servers, so that's always something to look at. Or lazy developers like myself use them for various reasons. Not that I'm a developer. That was a very bold statement for me to make. Uh, I face roll Python, and occasionally it works. So but yeah, so that's what it looks like. Oh. I'm actually just hitting this good proxy stuff. That's, I'm taking like a beta SAN certification for a network forensic analyst, and they talk about the squid proxy quite a bit. All right, so that's PyConvos. I had to give myself a little bit of a plug. I got like 90 seconds left. So uh, this is included in my, or the ex underscore t shark dot pcap is included in my class pcaps that I have on Secudio. So please go on there and download the pcap file if you'd like and run these and just see what they do. Um, and here's some example commands so you can just follow through. Again, it has that recipe. Uh, it will like take you, if you have T-Shark installed, like five minutes. It, and it's worth it just to see the output, in my opinion. Snort, real quick, one of the things I love to do is just uh, have a generic snort instance, hopefully have some tuned up rules, run a PCAP through it, look for weirdness. And then that can, uh, this is more of a technique, so I should probably move it to the next section. but. Uh, Go through, see if there's any alerts that pop up, and that's usually a first good place to start um, with figuring out if there's anything strange. Uh, app to get snort doesn't run out of the box, so uh, it's a good exercise to figure out how to disable rules. And uh, non PCAP tools, I don't have to talk about this nearly as long as I did with uh, my other class, but who is awesome IP and domain registrar, who B, which is a uh, Shorter IP information thing, I'm actually a contributor to that project. I have their Python uh, library that connects to that. I run that. Um, 
And then cut, awk, egrep, sort, unique, those things are super great when combined with TCP dump or T shark because you can reformat your output. I don't have to sing those praises to y'all. NS lookup, host, geo lookups. I have a geo lookup thing on my GitHub as well. I haven't looked at it in a long time. It's not evil, but I'm not 100% sure how it works anymore. So. Um, snort doesn't run, is that because of SC Linux? No, it's actually a, so Snort, when it loads its rules file, it uh, parses all the rules to make sure that they parse properly, because there's a very strict format that Snort rules are in. And there's one default rule that isn't formatted correctly. Um, and I think it may be just a difference between versions. So uh, you actually have to go in and disable it. So it's pretty good about telling you which rule is causing it to fail. Um, so just use that as a guide to say, all right, I'm going to go in here. All right, next presenter, by the way. I have like 40 seconds left. So uh, the more you have to start with, the better off you'll be. More verbose PCAPs is always better. Uh, obviously, there's a trade off between storage and collection capability and uh, the ability to parcel these PCAPs. Um, but more PCAPs, the better, in my opinion. It's an iterative process. You're probably not going to find what you're looking for in your first pass, just like anything. So be willing to go through it a few times. Uh, don't forget your basic command line tools. And when you write a tool, which PyConvos actually came out of this, post it to GitHub or Sourcefire or Google Code or whatever you want to do, because um, I love you. And uh, I love when people share tools. So the first thing that you're going to need to know when you're actually parsing this stuff out, if you're looking at old PCAPs, is you need manageable PCAPs. Um, I've dealt regularly with 300 gigabyte PCAPs, which you can't use in Wireshark, obviously. Um, so command line tools are perfect for that sort of stuff. And if they're stream oriented, you don't have to worry about buffering you know, all of your RAM. Um, if that's the right use of words in that order. <laughs> Um, time is a factor. You know, it takes 90 minutes to parse 300 gigs on the, ser or the a Mac Mini server. So be aware that when you're going through these things, don't be like, oh yeah, I'll look through 500 gigs worth of PCAPs in the next 15 minutes. This is probably not going to work. Um, chop them into smaller PCAPs using edit cap, which is something I like to do. And then if you need to, use a merge cap to put them back together again. Or cut out only what you need for an investigation merge them back together for your team. Uh, obviously, you really can't do that if you're doing like chain of custody kind of stuff, but uh, or integrity of evidence. Uh, also, something I don't have on here is just hash all of your PCAPs so you know what's up. Cap Infos, which I mentioned earlier, does hash all of your PCAPs for you, so you can just store those hashes off to the side. And then uh, finding sort of meta info like metadata. Uh, so conversations to and from. Find weird ports that you're not used to seeing. Uh, Pull out all of your IPs and run them against IP Void or some other IP database to see if there's any possible evil going on. And if you know your network, like your home network or your corporate network, you should have a vague idea of what should be going on there. So uh, if you see some things happening, run them down. Run PCAPs, see what's going on, find the user, uh, fire them. I don't know, do what you will. And then finally, um, Network Forensics Challenge. I can't remember the website. There's a few of them. Find them and do them. They're really fun. Uh, usually they have pretty good write-ups, too. Uh, Secudio.com slash plug.html, again, is where I put the exercises from my original version of the class, which I had to cut out. And if you have uh, questions you want to send to me directly, ktires at gmail.com. Um, I don't really think there's time. I don't want to take up too much more time for the next presenter. But uh, thank you very much for putting up with me going through this very fast. Um, there's a lot here, so again, my email box is open to anyone here who's interested in this and wants to do you know, a one-on-one -on -one or a small group or have me back here. So um, I believe in this when you're staring at a 500 gig PCAP that you see difficulty in every opportunity, or excuse me, pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity and an optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty, which in my case means, hey, I'm going to write something to put on my GitHub because I'm that guy. And uh, there's my license, so uh, take it, just don't sell it. Thank you very much.